Chapter 2 Part 1 Mr. Leopold Bloom ate with relish the inner organs of beasts and fowls. He liked thick giblet soup, nutty gizzards, a stuffed roast heart, liver slices fried with crust crumbs, fried hen puds rose. Most of all he liked grilled mutton kidneys which gave to his palate a fine tang of faintly scent urine. Kidneys were in his mind as he moved about the kitchen softly, writing her breakfast things on the humpy tray. Gail would light an air were in the kitchen but out of doors gentle summer morning everywhere. Made him feel a bit peckish. The coals were reddening. Another slice of bread and butter, three, four, right. She didn't like her plate full. Right. He turned from the tray, lifted the kettle off the hob and set it sideways on the fire. It sat there, dull and squat, his spout stuck out. Cup of tea soon. Good. Mouth dry. The cat walked stiffly round a leg of the table with tail on high. Now. Oh, there you are. Mr. Bloom said, turning from the fire. The cat mewed an answer and stalked again stiffly round a leg of the table, mewing. Just how she stalks over my writing table. P.R.R. Scratch my head. P.R.R. Mr. Bloom watched curiously, kindly the lithe black form. Clean to see, the gloss of her sleek hide. The white button under the butt of her tail, the green flashing eyes. He bent down to her, his hands on his knees. Milk for the pussins, he said. M-R-K-G-N-A-O. The cat cried. They call them stupid. They understand what we say better than we understand them. She understands all she wants to. Vindictive too. Cruel. Her nature. Curious mice never squeal. Seemed to like it. Wonder what I look like to her. Height of a tower? No, she can jump me. Afraid of the chickens she's, he said mockingly. Afraid of the churchooks. I never saw such a stupid pussins as the pussins. Cruel. Her nature. Curious mice never squeal. Seemed to like it. M-R-K-R-G-N-A-O. The cat said loudly. She blinked up out of her avid sham closing eyes, mewing plaintively and long, showing him her milk white teeth. He watched the dark eye slits narrowing with greed till her eyes were green stones. Then he went to the dresser, took the jug hand when his milkman had just filled for him. Poured warm bubbled milk on the saucer and set it slowly on the floor. Grr. She cried, running to lap. He watched the bristles shining weirdly in the weak lights as she tipped three times and licked lightly. Wonder is it true if you clip them they can't mouse after? Why? They shine in the dark, perhaps, the tips. Or kind of fillers in the dark, perhaps. He listened to her lick and laugh. Ham and eggs, no. No good eggs with this drown. Want pure fresh water. Thursday, not a good day either for a mutton kidney at Buckley's. Fried with butter, a shake of pepper. Better a pork kidney at the Luggerches. While the kettle's boiling. She lapped slower, then licking the saucer clean. Why are their tongues so rough? To laugh better, all power is holes. Nothing she can eat. He glanced round him. No. On quietly creaky boots he went up the staircase to the hall, paused by the bedroom door. She might like something tasty. Thin bread and butter she likes in the morning. Still perhaps, once in a way. He said softly in the bare hall, I'm going around the corner. Be back in a minute. And when he had heard his voice say it, he added, You don't want anything for breakfast. A sleepy soft grunt answered, 
Hey man. No. She didn't want anything. He heard then a warm heavy sigh, softer, as she turned over in the loose brass courts of the bed's hedge angle. Must get those settled really. Pity. All the way from Gibraltar. Forgotten any little Spanish she knew. Wonder what her father gave for it. Old style. Ah oh, yes. Of course. Bought it at the governor's auction. Got a short knock. Hard as nails at a bargain, old Tweety. Yes, sir. I pleaded it was. I rose from the ranks, sir, and I'm proud of it. Still, he had brains enough to make that corner in stamps. Now that it was far seeing. His hand took his hat from the peg over his initial heavy overcoat and his lost property off the second hand waterproof. Stamps, snuck high back pictures. Dare say lots of officers are in the swim too. Of course they do. The sweaty legend in the crown of his hat told him mutely, Plasto's high grade hawk. He peeped quickly inside a leather headband. White slip of paper. Quite safe. On the doorstep he felt in his hip pocket for the latchkey. Not there. In the trousers I left off. Must get it. Potato I have. Creaky wardrobe. No use disturbing her. She turned over sleepily that time. He pulled a hall door to after him very quietly, more till the footleaf dropped gently over the threshold, limp lid. Looked shut. All right till I come back anyhow. He crossed to the bright side, avoiding the loose shell R flap of number 75. The sun was nearing the staple of George's church. Be a warm day, I fancy. Especially in these black clothes, feel it more. Black conducts, reflects. Reflects as if the heat. But I couldn't go in that light suit. Make a picnic of it. His eyelids sank quietly often as he walked in happy warmth. Bowen's bread when delivering with trays are daily, but she prefers yesterday's loaves turnovers, crisp crowns hot. Makes you feel young. Somewhere in the east, early morning, set off at dawn. Travel round in front of the sun, steal days march on him. Keep it up forever, never grow a day older technically. Walk along a strand, strange land, come to a city gate, sentry there, old rank or two, old Tweety's big mustaches, leaning on a long kind of a spear. Wander through on streets. Turban faces going by. Dark caves of carpet shops. Big man, Turco the Terrible, seated cross-legged, smoking a coiled pipe. Cries of sellers in the streets. Drink water scented with fennel, sherbet. Dander along all day. Might meet a robber or two. Well, meet him. Getting on to sundown. The shadows of the mosques among the pillars, priest with a scroll rolled up. A shiver of the trees, signal, the evening wind. I pass on. Fading gold sky. A mother watches me from her doorway. She calls her children home in their dark language. How wall, beyond strings twanged. Night sky, moon, violet, color of Molly's new garters. Strings. Listen. A girl playing one of those instruments, what do you call them, dulcimers? I pass. Probably not a bit like it, really. Kind of stuffy red, in the track of the sun. Sunburst on the title page. He smiled, pleasing himself. What Arthur Griffith said about the headpiece over the Freeman leader. A homily rule sun rising up in the northwest from the landway behind the bank of Ireland. He prolonged his pleased smile. It could touch that, 
Palmer rule sun rising up in the northwest. He approached Larry O'Rourke's. From the cellar grating floated at the flabby gush of porter. Through the open doorway the bar squirted out weefs of ginger, tedus, biscuit mush. Good house, however, just then to the city traffic. For instance, M. Ollie's down there, and G. As position. Of course, if there ran a tram line along the North Circular from the Catlin Market to the Quays, value would go up like a shot. Bald head over the blind. Cute old coacher. No use canvassing him for an ad. Still, he knows his own business best. There he is, sure enough, my bold Larry, leaning against the cigar bin in his shirt sleeves watching the prone curate swab up with mop and bucket. Simon Dillis takes him off to a tea with his eyes screwed up. Do you know what I'm going to tell you? What's that, Mr. O'Rourke? Do you know what? The Russians, they'd only be at eight o'clock breakfast for the Japanese. Stop and say a word, about the funeral perhaps. Sad thing about poor Dignan, Mr. O'Rourke. Turning into Dorset Street he said freshly and greeting through the doorway, Good day, Mr. O'Rourke. Good day to you. Lovely weather, sir. Dashed his all that. Where do they get the money? Coming up red-headed currents from the county lot room, rinsing empties an old man in the cellar. Then, lo and behold, the blossom out is Adam Findlater's or Dan Talon's. Then thin of the competition. General thirst. Good puzzle would be cross doubling without passing a pub. Save it to can. Off the drunks, perhaps. Put down three and carry five. What is that, Bob? Here and there, dribs and drabs. On the wholesale orders, perhaps. Doing a double shuffle with the town travelers. Square at you with the boss and we'll split the job, see. How much would it taught you up the porter in the month? Say ten barrels of stuff. Say he got ten percent off. Oh, more. Fifteen. He passed St. Joseph's National School. Brats claw mower. Windows open. Fresh air helps memory. Or a little. A B C D F U G Colom and Opia Curus Boys are they? Yes. In a stirk. In this hark, in this boffin, at their geography, mine, slide blue. He halted before the luggage's window, staring at the hanks of sausages, polonies, black and white. Fifteen multiplied by the figures widened in his mind, unsolved, displeased, he let them fade. The shiny links. Packed with forced meat, fed his gaze and he breathed in tranquil the lukewarm breath of cooked spicy pig's blood. A kitten used blood gouts on the willow pattern dish, the last. He stood by the next dog girl at the counter. Which you buy too, calling the items from a slip in her hand. Chapped, washing soda. And a pound and a half of Denny's sausages. His eyes rested on her vigorous hips. Woods his name is. Wonder what he does. Wife is oldish. New blood. No followers of loud. Strong pair of arms. Whacking a carpet on the cloth this line. She does whack it, by George. The way her crooked skirt swings at each whack. The ferrite pork butcher folded the sausages he had snipped off with blotchy fingers, sausage ping. Sound meat there, like a stealthy heifer. He took a page up from the pile on cut sheets, the model farm at Kinnereth on the lake shower of Tiberias. Can become ideal winter sanatorium. 
and Moses Montefiore. I thought he was. Farmhouse, well-rounded, blurred cattle cropping. He held the page from him, interesting, read it nearer, the title, the blurred cropping cattle, the page rustling, a young white heifer. Those mornings in the cattle market, the beasts lowing in their pens, branded sheep, flop and fall of dough, the breeders in hobnailed boots trudging through the litter, slapping a palm on the ripe emitted hind quarter, there's a prime one, unpeeled switches in their hands. He held the pages lying patiently, bending his senses and his will, his soft subject gaze at rest. The crooked skirt swinging, whack by whack by whack. The pork butcher snapped two sheets from the pile, wrapped up her prime sausages and made a red grimace. Now, my miss, he said. She tendered a coin, smiling boldly, holding her thick wrist out. Thank you my miss, and one shilling thirpence change. For you, please. And Mr. Bloom pointed quickly to catch up and walk behind her if she went slowly, behind her moving hands. Pleasant to see first thing in the morning. Hurry up, damn it. Make hay while the sun shines. She stood outside the shop and sunlight and sauntered lazily to the right. He sighed down his nose, but never understand. So they capped hands. Crust the toenails too. Brown scapulars and tatters, defending her both ways. The sting of disregard glowed a weak pleasure within his breast. For another, a constable off-duty cuddling her in Echo's Lane. They liked them sizable. Prime sausage. Oh, please, Mr. Policeman, I'm lost in the wood. Thrippence, please. His hand accepted the moist tender gland and slid it into a side of pocket. Then they fetched up three coins from his trousers pocket and laid them on the rubber prickles. They lay, were read quickly and quickly slid, disc by disc, into the till. Thank you, sir. Another time. A speck of eager fire from fox eyes think of him. He withdrew his gaze after an instant. No, better not, another time. Good morning, he said, moving away. Good morning, sir. No sign. Gone. What matter? He walked back along Dorset Street, reading gravely. A gentle new time, planter's company to purchase way sandy tracts from Turkish government and plant with eucalyptus trees. Excellent for shade, fuel and construction. Orange groves in immense Milan fields north of Jaffa. You pay 80 marks and they plant a dunham of land free with olives, oranges, almonds or citrons. Olives cheaper, oranges need artificial irrigation. Every year you get a setting of the crop. Who named entered for life his owner in the book of the union. Can pay ten down in the balance in yearly installments. Bleib Drastras 34, Berlin, A 15. Nothing doing. Still an idea behind it. He looked at the cattle, blurred in silver heat. Silver battered oliva trees. Quite long days, pruning, ripening. Olives are packed in jars, eh? I have a few left from Andrews. Molly spitting them out. Knows the taste of them now. Oranges and tissue paper packed in crates. Sit rounds too. Wondrous pool citron still in St. Kevin's parade. And mass the Ansky with the old scither. Pleasant evenings we had then. Molly and Citron's basket chair. Nice to hold, cool waxen fruit, hold in the hand, lift it to the nostrils and smell the perfume. Like that, heavy, sweet, wild perfume. Always the same, year after year. The fetched high prices too, Moisel told me. 
a beautiful place, pleasant street, pleasant old times. Must be without a flaw, he said. Coming all that way, Spain, Gibraltar, Mediterranean, the Levant. Crates lined up on the quayside at Jaffa, chap ticking them off in the book, navies handling them barefoot in soiled dungarees. There's white dog out cow him out of. How do you? Doesn't see. Chap, you know, just a salute bit of a board. His back is like that Norwegian captain's. Wonder if I'll meet him today. Water in card. To provoke the rain. On earth as it is in heaven. A cloud began to cover the sun slowly, wholly. Gray. Far. No, not like that. A barren land, bare waste. Volcanic lake, the Dead Sea, no fish, weedless, sunk deep in the earth. No wind could lift those waves, gray metal, poisonous foggy waters. Brimstone they called it raining down, the cities of the plain, Sodom, Gomorrah, Eden. All dead names. A dead sea and a dead land, grand old. Old now. Who bore the oldest, the first race. A band had crossed from Cassidy's, clutching an arrogant bottle by the neck. The oldest people, wandered far away over all the earth, captivity to captivity, multiplying, dying, being born everywhere. It lay there now. Now it could bear no more. Dead, an old woman's, the gray sunken cunt of the world. Desolation. Gray horror seared his flesh. Folding the page into his pocket he turned into Echo Street, hurrying homeward. Cold oils slid along his veins, chilling his blood, age crusting him with the salt cloak. Well, I am here now. Yes, I am here now. Morning mouth bad images. Got up wrong side of the bed. Must begin again those Sandoz exercises. On the hands down. Blotchy brown brick houses. Number eighty still unlit. Why is that? Valuation is only twenty-eight. Towers, Battersby, nor MacArthur, parlor windows plastered with bills. Plasters on a sore eye. To smell the gentle smoke of tea, fume of the pan, sizzling butter. Be near her ample bed warm flesh. Yes, yes. Quick warm sunlight came running from Berkeley Road, swiftly, in slim sandals, along the brightening footpath. Runs, she runs to meet me, a girl with gold hair on the wind. Two letters and a card lay on the hall floor. He stooped and gathered them. Mrs. Marion Bloom. His quickened heart slowed at once. Bold hand. Mrs. Marion. Poldy. Entering the bedroom he half closed his eyes and walked through a warm yellow twilight towards her tussled head. Who are the letters for? He looked at them. Mullinger. Millie. A letter from from Millie, he said carefully, and a card to you. And a letter for you. He laid her card and letter on the twill bed spread near the curve of her knees. Do you want the blind up? Letting the blind up by gentle tugs halfway his backward I saw her glance at the letter and tuck it under her pillow. That do? He asked, turning. She was reading the card, propped on her elbow. She got the things, she said. He waited till she had laid the card aside and curled herself back slowly with a snug sigh. Hurry up with that tea, she said. I'm parched. The kettle's boiling, he said. But he delayed to clear the chair, her striped petticoat, tossed soiled linen, and lifted all in an arm flung to the foot of the bed. As he went down the kitchen stairs she called, Poldy. What? Scrawl the teapot. 
On the boil, sure enough, a plume of steam from the spout. He scalded and rinsed out the teapot and put in four full spoons of tea, tilting the kettle in to let the water flow in. Having set it to draw, he took off the kettle, crushed the pan flat on the live coals and watched the lump of butter slide and melt. While he unwrapped the kidney, the cat mewed hungrily against him. Give her too much meat, she won't mouse. Say they won't eat pork. Kosher. Here. He let the blood smear paper fall to her and dropped the kidney amid the sizzling butter sauce. Pepper. He sprinkled it through his fingers ringwise from the chip egg cup. Then he slid open his letter, glancing down the page and over. Thanks, new tam, Mr. Coughlin, lie our well picnic, a young student, blazes boil and seaside girls. The tea was drawn. He filled his own mustache echo, sham cried derby, smiling. Silly Millie's birthday gift. Only five she was then. No, wait, four. I gave her the ombaro necklace she broke. Putting pieces of folded brown paper in the letter box for her. He smiled, powering. Oh, Milla Bloom, you're my darling. You're my looking glass from night to morning. I'd rather have you without a farthing than Katie Keel with her ass in garden. Poor old Professor Goodwin. Dreadful old case. Still, he was a courteous old chap. Old fashioned way he used a bow molly off the platform. And the little mirror and his silk hat. The night Millie brought it into the parlor. Oh, look what I found in Professor Goodwin's hat. All oh, we laughed. Sex breaking out even then. Pert little piece she was. He prodded a fork into the kidney and slapped it over, then filled the teapot on the tray. It's hump bumped as he took it up. Everything on it. Bread and butter, four, sugar, spoon, the cream. Yes. He carried it upstairs, his thumb hooked in the teapot handle. Nudging the door open with his knee, he carried the tray in and set it on the chair by the bed. What a time you were. She said. She set the brasses jingling as she raised herself briskly, an elbow on the pillow. He looked calmly down on her bulk and between her large soft boobs, sloping within her nightdress like a shago setter. The warmth of her couch body rose on the air, mingling with the fragrance of the tea she poured. A strip of torn envelope peeped from under the dimpled pillow. In the act of going, he stayed to straighten the bedspread. Who was the letter from? He asked. Bold hand. Marion. Oh, boy, she said. He's bringing the program. What are you singing? Lossie there with J.C. Doyle, she said, and loves old sweet song. Her full lips, drinking, smiled. Rather stale smell that incense leaves next day. Like foul floor water. Would you like the window open a little? She doubled a slice of bread into her mouth, asking, What time is the funeral? Eleven, I think, he answered. I didn't see the paper. Following the pointing of her finger, he took up a leg of her soiled drawers from the bed. No. Then, a twist the gray garter loop around the stocking, rumpled, shiny sole. No, that book. Other stocking. Her petticoat. It must have fell down, she said. He fell here and there. Voglio e non vorrei. Wonder if she pronounces that right, Voglio. Not in the bed. Must have slid down. He stooped and lifted the valance. The book, fallen, sprawled against the bulge of the orange eyed chamber pot. Show here, she said. I put a mark in it. There's a word I wanted to ask you.
She swallowed a draft of tea from her cup held by Nutland Olin, having wiped her fingertips smartly on the blanket, began to search the text of the harp until she reached the word. Met him what? He asked. Here, she said. What does that mean? He leaned downward and read near her polished thumbnail. Met him psychosis? Yes. Who's he when he's at home? Met him psychosis, he said, frowning. It's Greek, from the Greek. That means the transmigration of souls. Oh, rocks. She said. Tell us in plain words. He smiled, glancing askance at her mocking eyes. The same young eyes. The first night after the charades. Dolphin's barn. He turned over the smudged pages. Ruby, the pride of the ring. Hello. Illustration. Fierce Italian with carriage whip. Must be a ruby pride of the on the flower naked. She kindly went. The monster Maffi desisted and flung his victim from him with an oath. Cruelty behind it all. Dope animals. Trapeze at hanglers. Had to look the other way. Mob gaping. Break your neck and we'll break our sides. Families of them. Bone them young so them at speakosis. That we live after death. Our souls. That a man's soul after he dies. Dig mom's soul. Did you finish it? He asked. Yes, she said. There's nothing smutty in it. Is she in love with the first fellow all the time? Never read it. Do you want another? Yes. Get another of Paul D. Cox. Nice name he has. She poured more tea into her cup, watching it flow sideways. Must get the Capel Street Library book renewed or they'll write to Kearney, my guarantor. Reincarnation, that's the word. Some people believe, he said, that we go on living in another body after death, that we lived before. They call it reincarnation, that we all lived before on the earth thousands of years ago on some other planet. They say we have forgotten it. Some say they remember their past lives. The sluggish cream wound curdling spirals through her tea. But he reminds her of the word, metempsychosis. An example would be better. An example. The bath of the nymph over the bed. Given the way with the eastern number of photo bits, splendid masterpiece and art colors. Taint before he put milk in. Not like her with her hair down, slimmer. Three and six I gave for the frame. She said it would look nice over the bed. Naked limps, grace, for instance all the people that live there. He turned the pages back. Metempsychosis, he said, is what the ancient Greeks called it. They used to believe you could be changed into an animal or a tree, for instance. What they called nymphs, for example. Her spoon ceased to stir up the sugar. She gazed straight before her, inhaling through her arched nostrils. There's a smell of burn, she said. Did you leave anything on the fire? The kidney. He cried suddenly. He fit in the book roughly into his inner pocket and, stubbing his toes against the broken commode, hurried out towards the smell, stepping hastily down the stairs with a flurried stork's legs. Pungent smoke shot up in an angry jet from the side of the pan. By prodding a prong of the fork under the kidney he detached it and turned a turtle on its back. Only a little burn. He tossed it off the pan onto the plate and let the scanty brown gravy trickle over it. Cup of tea now. He sat down, cut and buttered a slice of the loaf. He shore away the burned flesh and flung it to the cat. 
Then he put a forkful into his mouth, chewing with discernment the toothsome pliant meat. Done to a turn. A mouthful of tea. Then he cut away dies of bread, sopped one in the gravy and put it in his mouth. What was that about some young student in a picnic? He creased out the letter at his side, reading it slowly as he chewed, sopping another dye of bread in the gravy and raising it to his mouth. Dearest Patley, thanks ever so much for the lovely birthday present. It suits me splendid. Everyone says I am quite the belle in my new tan. I got Mummy's Ivory box of creams and am writing. They're lovely. I am getting on swimming in the photo business now. Mr. Coughlin took one of me and Mrs. Wilson when developed. We had a great biz yesterday. Fair day and all the beef to the hills were in. We're going to lie our well on Monday with a few friends to make a scrap picnic. Give my love to Mummy and do yourself a big kiss and thanks. I hear them at the piano downstairs. There's to be a concert in the Greville Arms on Saturday. There's a young student comes here some evenings named Ben and his cousins or something are big swells and he sings Boylan's I was on the pop of writing Blaze's Boylan's song about the seaside girls. Tell him Silly Millie sends my best respects. I must now close but form this love reformed daughter, Millie. P.S. Excuse bad writing am in hurry. Bye bye. M15 yesterday. Curious, 15th of the month too. Her first birthday away from home. Separation. Remember the summer morning she was born, running the knock up Mrs. Thornton in Demzil Street. Jolly old woman. Lot of babies she must have helped to the world. She knew from the first pull little Rudy wouldn't live. Well, God is good, sir. She knew it once. He would be eleven now if he had lived. His vacant face stared pityingly at the postscript. Excuse bad writing. Hurry. Piano downstairs. Coming out of her shell. Row with her in the XL cafe about the bracelet. Wouldn't eat her cakes or speak or look. South box. He sought other dyes of bread and a gravy and ate piece after piece of kidney. Twelve and six a week. Not much. Still, she might do worse. Music hall stage. Young student. He drank a draft from cooler tea to wash down his meal. Then he read the letter again twice. Oh, well, she knows how to mind herself. But if not, no, nothing has happened. Of course it might. Wait in any case till it does. A wild piece of goods. Her slim legs running up the staircase. Destiny. Ripening now. Vain, very. He smiled with troubled affection at the kitchen window. Day I caught her in the street pinching her cheeks to make them red. Anemic a little. Was given milk too long. On the errands king that day round the kish. Damned old tub pitching about. Not a bit funky. Her pale blue scarf loose in the wind with her hair. All dimpled cheeks and curls. Your head it simply swirls. Seaside girls. Torn envelope. Hands stuck in his trousers pockets. Jargy off for the day, singing. Friend of the family. Swirls, he says. Peer with lamps, summer evening, band, those girls, those girls, and those lovely seaside girls. Millie too. Young Kisses, the first. Far away now past. Mrs. Marion. Reading, lying back now, counting the strands of her hair, smiling, braiding. A soft qualm, regret, 
flow down his backbone, increasing, will happen, yes, prevent, useless, can't move, girl's sweet light lips, will happen too, he felt the flowing qualm spread over him, useless to move now, lips kissed, kissing, kissed, full gluey woman's lips, better where she is down there, away, occupy her, wanted the dog to pass the time, might take a trip down there, August bank holiday, only two and six return, six weeks off, however, might work a press pass, or through M. Coy, the cat, having cleaned all her fur, returned to the meat stained paper, knows that it went stop to the door. She looked back at him, mewing. Wants to go out. Wait for a door sometime it will open. Let her wait. Has the fidgets. Electric. Thunder in the air. Was washing her ear with her back to the fire too. He felt heavy, full, then a gentle loosening of his bowels. He stood up, undoing the waistband of his trousers. The cat mewed to him. Meow. He said in answer. Wait till I'm ready. Heaviness, hot day coming. Too much trouble to fag up the stairs to the landing. A paper. He liked to read at stool. Hope and wait comes knocking just as I am. In the table drawer he found an old number of tip bits. He folded it under his armpit, went to the door and opened it. The cat went up in soft bounds. Ah, wanted to go upstairs, curl up in the ball on the bed. Listening, he heard her voice, Come, come, pussy. Come. He went out through the back door into the garden, stood to listen towards the next garden. No sound. Perhaps hanging clothes out to dry. The maid was in the garden. Fine morning. He bent down to regard a lean file of spearmint growing by the wall. Make a summer house here. Scarlet runners. Virginia creepers. Want the manure the whole place over, scabby soil. A coat and liver of sulfur. All soil like that without dung. Household slopes. Loam, what is this that is? The hens in the next garden, their droppings are very good top dressing. Best of all though are the cattle, especially when they are fed on those oil cakes. Mulch of dung. Best thing the clean ladies' kid gloves. Dirty cleans. Ashes too. Reclaim the whole place. Grow peas in that corner there. Lettuce. Always have fresh greens then. Still gardens have their drawbacks. That deer blew a bottle here with Monday. He walked on. Where's my hat, by the way? Must have put it back on the pin, or hanging up on the floor. Funny I don't remember that. House stand too full. Four umbrellas, a rain cloak. Picking up the letters. Drago's shop bell ringing. Queer I was just thinking that moment. Brown brillanting hair over his collar. Just had a wash and brush up. Wonder have I time for a bath this morning. Terrace Street. Chap in the pay box there got away James Stevens, they say. Oh, Brian. Deep voice that fellow to love of Chaz. Jendeth, what is it? Now, my miss. Enthusiast. He kicked open the crazy door of the Jakes. Better be careful not to get these trousers dirty for the funeral. He went in, bowing his head under the low linnel. Leaving the door ajar, amid the stench of moldy linwash and stale cobwebs, he undid his braces. 
Before sitting down he peered through a chink up at the next door windows. The king was in his counting house. Nobody. He squat on the cook's stool. he folded out his paper, turning its pages over on his bared knees. Something new and easy. No great hurry. Keep it a bit. A prize tidbit, Matcham's Master Stroke. Written by Mr. Philip Biafoy, Playgoers Club, London. Payment at the rate of one guinea a column has been made to the writer. Three and a half. Three pounds three. Three pounds, thirteen and six. Quietly he read, restraining himself, the first column in, yielding but resisting, began the second. Midway, his last resistance yielding. He allowed his bowel to ease themselves quietly as he read, reading still patiently that slight constipation of yesterday quite gone. Hope it's not too big bring on piles again. No, just right. So. Ah. Costed. One tabloid of cascara saw grotta. Life might be so. It did not move or touch him, but it was something quick and neat. Print anything now. Silly season. He read on, seated calm above his own rising smell. Neat certainly. Matt often thinks of the master stroke by which he won the laughing witch and now. Begins and ends morally. Hand in hand. Smart. He glanced back through what he had read in, while feeling his water flow quietly, he envied kindly Mr. Biafor who had written it and received payment of three pounds, thirteen and six. Might manage a sketch. By Mr. and Mrs. L. M. Blue. Invent a story for some proverb. Which time I used to try jotting down on my cuff what she said dressing. Just like dressing together. Nick myself shaving. Biting her nether lip, hooking the plaque into her skirt. Timing her. Nine. L5. Did Roberts pay you yet? 9.20. What had Greta Conroy on? 9.23. What possessed me to buy this comb? 9.24. I'm swelled after that cabbage. A speck of dust on the patent leather of her boot. Rubbing smartly and turn each weld against her stockings calf. Morning after the bizarre dance when May's band played Puan Chili's Dance of the Hours. Explain that, morning hours, noon, then evening coming on, the night hours. Washing her teeth. That was the first night. Her head dancing. Her fan sticks clicking. Is it boiling well off? He has money. Why? I noticed he had a good rich smell off his breath dancing. No use humming then. Blue to it. Strange kind of music that last night. The mirror was in shadow. She rubbed her hands last briskly on her woolen vest against her full wagon bulb. Peering into it. Lines in her eyes. It wouldn't pan out somehow. Evening hours, girls in gray gauze. Night hours then, black with daggers and eye masks. Poetical idea, pink, then golden, then gray, then black. Still. True to life also. Day, then the night. He tore away half the prize story sharply and wiped himself with it. Then he girded up his trousers, braced and buttoned himself. He pulled back the jerky shaky door of the jakes and came forth from the gloom into the air. In the bright light, lightened and cooled in limb, he eyed carefully his black trousers, the ends, the knees, the house of the knees. What time is the funeral? Better find out in the paper. A creak and a dark were in the air high up. The bells of George's church. 
They told the hour, loud dark iron. Hey oh, hey oh, hey oh, hey oh, hey oh, hey oh. Quarter two. There again, the overtone following through the air, third. Poor Dignan. By Lowry's along Sir John Rogerson's key Mr. Bloom walked soberly, past Wyndham Lane, Leask's the Lindsay Crusher, the Postal Telegraph Office. Could have given the address to. And past the sailor's home. He turned from the morning noises of the quayside and walked the Relime Street. By Brady's cottage as a boy for the skins lulled, his bucket of oaf fall length, smoking a chewed fag butt. A smaller girl with scars of eczema on her forehead eyed him, listlessly holding her battered cask loop. Tell him if he smokes he won't grow. Oh, let him. His life isn't such a bed of roses. Waiting outside pubs to bring die home. Come home to ma, da. Slack hour, won't be many there. He crossed towns and street. Past the frowning face of Bethel. L, yes, how's of Olive, Beth. And past Nichols the Undertaker. At eleven it is. Time enough. Dare say Corny killer her bag the job for O'Neill's. Singing with his eyes shut. Corny. Met her once in the park. In the dark. What a lark. Police town. Her name and address she then told with my Tawarlum Tawarlum Tay. Oh, surely he bagged it. Bury him cheap and I her tie you may call. With my Tawarlum, 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 Tawarlum. And Westland Row he halted before the window of the Belfast and Oriental Tea Company and read the legends of lead paper packets. Choice bullion, finest quality. Family tea. Rather warm. Tea. Must get some from Tom Kernan. Couldn't ask him at a funeral, though. While his eyes still read blandly, he took off his hat quietly, inhaling his hair oil, and sent his right hand with slow grace over his brow and hair. Very warm morning. Under their dropped lids, his eyes found the tiny bow of the leather headband inside his high grade hawk. Just there. His right hand came down into the bowl of his hat. His fingers found quickly a card behind the headband and transferred it to his waistcoat pocket. So warm. His right hand once more more slowly went over his brow and hair. Then he put on his hat again, relieved, and read again, choice bullion, made of the final salon brands. The Far East. Lovely spot it must be, the garden of the world, big lazy leaves that float about on, cactuses, flowery meads, snaky lianas they call them. Wonder is it like that. Those singalese larving about in the sun in double chain far and empty, not doing a hand's turn all day. Sleep six months out of twelve. Too hot to quarrel. Influence of the climate. Lethargy. Flowers of idleness. The air feeds most. Zots. Hot house and botanic gardens. Sensitive plants. Water lilies. Petals too tired to. Sleeping sickness in the air. Walk on rosa leaves. Imagine trying to eat tripe and kawil. Where was the chap I saw in that picture somewhere? Oh yes, in the Dead Sea floating on his back, reading a book with the parasol open. Couldn't sink if he tried, so thick with salt. Because the weight of the water, no, the weight of the body in the water is equal to the weight of the what? Or is it the volume is equal to the weight? It's the law something like that. The Vance in high school cracking his fine grid joints, teaching. The college curriculum. Kraken curriculum. What is weight really when you say the weight? 32 feet per second per second. 
law of falling bodies, per second per second. They all fall to the ground. The earth. It's the force of gravity of the earth is the way. He turned away and sauntered across the road. How did she walk with her sausages? Like that something. As he walked he took the folded from him from his side to pluck it, unfolded it, rolled it lengthwise in a baton and tapped it at each sauntering step against his trouser leg. Careless air, just drop in to see. Per second per second. Per second for every second it means. From the curbstone he darted a keen glance through the door of the post office. Too late box. Post here. No one. In. He handed the card through the brass grill. Are there any letters for me? He asked. While the postmaster searched a pigeonhole he gazed at the recruiting poster with soldiers of all arms on parade and held the tip of his baton against his nostrils, smelling fresh printed rag paper. No answer probably. Went too far last time. The postmistress handed him back through the grill his card with a letter. He then turned glanced rapidly at the type envelope. Henry Flower esque C slash OPO Westland Row, C. Answered anyhow. He slipped card and letter into his side to pluck it, reviewing again the soldiers on parade. Where's old Tweedy's regiment? Cast off soldier. There, burst can cap and hackle plume. No, he's a grenadier. Pointed cuffs. There he is, Royal Dublin Facilities. Red coats. To show it. That must be why the women go after them. Uniform. Easier to enlist and drill. Maud Gorn's letter about taking them off O'Connell Street at night. Disgrace to our Irish capital. Griffith's paper is on the same tack now. An army rotten with venereal disease. Overseas or half seas over empire. Half baked the look. Hypnotize black. Eyes front. Mark time. Table, able. Bed, at. The king's own. Never see him dressed up as a fireman or a bobby. A mason, yes. He strolled out of the post office and turned to the right. Talk, as if that would mend matters. His hand went into his pocket and a forefinger felt its way under the flap of the envelope, ripping it open in jerks. Women will pay a lot of heed, I don't think. His fingers drew forth the letter the letter and crumpled the envelope in his pocket. Something pinned on, photo perhaps. Hair. No. Incoy. Get rid of him quickly. Take me out of my way. Hey, company, when you. Hello, Bloom. Where are you up to? Hello, Mkoy. Nowhere in particular. How's the body? Fine. How are you? Just keeping alive, Mkoy said. His eyes on the black tie and clothes, he asked with low respect, Is there any? No trouble, I hope. I see you were. Oh, no, Mr. Bloom said. Poor Dignan, you know. The funeral is today. To be sure, poor fellow. So it is. What time? A photo it isn't. A badge, maybe. E. Eleven, Mr. Bloom answered. I must try to get out there, M. Cor said. Eleven, is it? I only heard it last night. Who was telling me? Hollihan. You know Hoppy. I know. Mr. Bloom gazed across the road at the outsider drawn up before the door of the Grosvenor. The porter hoisted the valise up on the well. She stood still, waiting, while the man, husband, Brother, like her, searched his pockets for change. 
stylish kind of coat with that roll collar, warm for a day like this, looks like blanket cloth. Carol stands at her with her hands in those patched pockets. Like that haughty creature at the polo match. Women all forecast to touch the spot. Handsome as and handsome does. Reserved about the eel. The Honorable Mrs. and Brutus is an honorable man. Possess her once take the starch out of her. I was with Bob Doran, he's on one of his periodical bands, and what do you call him Bantam Lines? Just down there in Conway's we were. Doran Lines and Conway's. She raised the gloved hand to her hair. And came Hoppy. Having a what? Drawing back his head and gazing far from beneath his veiled eyelids, he saw the bright fawn skin shine and the glare, the braided drums. Clearly I can see today. Moisture about gives long sight, perhaps. Talking of one thing or another. Lady's hand. Which side will she get up? And he said, sad thing about our pool friend Patty. What Patty? I said, poor little Patty Dignan, he said, off to the country, Broadstone probably, high brown boots with laces dangling, welch and foot, what is he foostering over that change for, sees me looking, I out for other fellow always, good for a back, two strings to her bow, why? I said, what's wrong with him? I said, proud, rich, silk stockings. Yes, Mr. Bloom said. He moved a little to the side of M. Coy's talking head. Getting up in a minute. What's wrong with him? He said. He's dead, he said. And, faith, he filled up. Is it Patty Dignan? I said. I couldn't believe it when I heard it. I was with him no later than Friday last and Thursday was it in the arch. Yes, he said. He's gone. He died on Monday, poor fellow. Watch. Watch. Silk flash rich stockings white. Watch. A heavy tram care honking it's going slewed between. Lost it. Curse your noisy pug nose. Feels locked out of it. Paradise and the Perry. Always happening like that. The very moment. Girl in Eustace Street hallway Monday was at settling her garter. Her friend covering the display of a spree to car. Well, what are you gaping at? Yes, yes, Mr. Bloom said after a dull sigh. Another gone. One of the best, M. Cor said. The tram passed. They drove off towards the loop line bridge, her rich gloved hand on a still grip. Flicker, flicker, the lace flare of her hat in the sun, flicker, flick. Wife, well, I suppose. M. Coy's changed voice said. Oh, yes, Mr. Bloom said. Tip top, thanks. He unrolled the newspaper baton idly and read idly, What is home without Plumtree's potted meat? Incomplete with it in a boat of bliss. My missus has just got an engagement. At least it's not settled yet. Valise tag again. By the way, no harm. I'm off that, thanks. Mr. Bloom turned his large elided eyes with an hasty friendliness. My wife too, he said. She's going to sing at a swagger affair in the Ulster Hall, Belfast, on the 25th. That's so. M. Cor said. Glad to hear that, old man. Who's getting it up? Mrs. Marion Bloom. Not up yet. Queen was in her bedroom eating bread and... No book. 
black and cork cards laid along her thigh by sevens. Dark lady and fair man. Letter. Cat furry black ball. Torn strip of envelope. Love's old sweet song comes low of's old. It's a kind of a tour, don't you see? Mr. Bloom said thoughtfully. Sweet song. There's a committee formed. Part shares and part profits. M. Coy nodded, picking at his mustache stubble. Oh, well, he said. That's good news. He moved to go. Well, glad to see you a-looking fit, he said. Meet you knocking around. Yes, Mr. Bloom said. Tell you what, M. Coy said. You might put down my name at the funeral, will you? I'd like to go, but I mightn't be able, you see. There's a drowning case at San Diego of Med turn up and then the coroner and myself would have to go down if the body is found. You just shove in my name if I'm not there, will you? I'll do that, Mr. Bloom said, moving to get off. That'll be all right. Right, M. Cor said brightly. Thanks, old man. I'd go if I possibly could. Well, the law. Just see P.M. Coy will do. That will be done, Mr. Bloom answered firmly. Didn't catch me napping that wheeze. The quick touch. Soft mark. I'd like my job. But at least I have a particular fancy for. Leather. Cap corners, reverted edges, double action lever lock. Bomb Kyle lent him his for the wink lower guy the concert last year and never heard tidings of it from that good day to this. Mr. Bloom, strolling towards Brunswick Street, smiled. My missus has just got in. Really freckled soprano. She's everything knows. Nice enough in its way. For a little ballad. No guts in it. You and me, don't you know, in the same boat. Soft swaping. Give you the needle that would. Can't you hear the difference? Think he's that way inclined a bit. Against my grain somehow. Thought that Belfast would fetch him. I hope that small plucks up there doesn't get worse. Suppose she wouldn't let herself be vaccinated again. Your wife and my wife. Wonder is he pimping after me? Mr. Bloom stood at the corner, his eyes wandering over the multicolored hoardings. Cantrell and Cochran's ginger ale aromatic. Clurry's summer sale. No, he's going on straight. Hello? Leah tonight. Mrs. Bandman Palmer. Like to see her again in that. Hamlet she played last night. Male impersonator. Perhaps he was a woman. Why Ophelia committed suicide. Poor Papa. How he used the talk of Kate Bateman in that. Outside the Adelphi in London waited all the afternoon to get in. Year before I was born it was. 65. In Restorian Vienna. What is this the right name is? By Mosenthal it is. Rachel, is it? No. The scene he was always talking about where the old blind Abraham recognizes the voice and puts his fingers on his face. Nathan's voice. His son's voice. I hear the voice of Nathan who left his father to die of grief and misery in my arms, who left the house of his father and left the God of his father. Every word is so deep, Leopold. Poor Papa. Poor man. I'm glad I didn't go into the room to look at his face. That day. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Foo. Well. Perhaps it was best for him. Mr. Bloom went round the corner and passed the drooping nags at the hazard. 
No use thinking of it anymore. Nose bag time. Wish I hadn't met that Encore fellow. He came near and heard a crunching of gilded oats, the gently champing teeth. Their full buck eyes regarded him as he went by, amid the sweet oat and rake at horsey peace. There, El Dorado. Poor Jugginses. Damn all they know or care about anything with the long noses stuck on nose bags. <coughs> Too full for words. Still they get their feed all right in their dos. Gilded too, a stump of black gut aperture wagon limped between their haunches. Might be happy all the same that way. Good poor brutes they look. Still their neck can be very irritating. He drew the letter from his pocket and folded it into the newspaper he carried. Might just walk into her here. The lane is safer. He passed the cabman's shelter. Curious the life of drifting cabbies. All weathers, all places, time or set down, no will of their own. Voglio in love. Like to give them an odd cigarette. Sociable. Shout a few flying syllables as they pass. He hummed, la si derm la mano la 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 la. He turned into Cumberland Street and, going on some paces, halted in the lead of the station wall. No one. Mid's timber yard. Piled box. Ruins and tenements. With careful tread he passed over the hopscotch court with its forgotten pickest tone. Not a sinner. Near the timber yard the squatted child at marbles, alone, shooting the tall with the coony thumb. A wise tabby, a blinking sphinx, watched from her warm sill. Pity to disturb them. Mohammed cut a piece out of his mantle not to wake her. Open it. And once I played marbles when I went to that old dame's school. She liked McNaughnet. Mrs. Ellis's. And Mr. He opened the letter within the newspaper. A flower. I think it's a, a yellow flower with flattened petals. Not a northern. What does she say? Dear Henry, I got your last letter to me and thank you very much for it. I am sorry you did not like my last letter. Why did you enclose the stamps? I am awfully angry with you. I do wish I could punish you for that. I called you naughty boy because I do not like that other world. Please tell me what is the real meaning of that word. Are you not happy in your home you poor little naughty boy? I do wish I could do something for you. Please tell me what you think of poor me. I often think of the beautiful name you have. Dear Henry, when will we meet? I think of you so often you have no idea. I have never felt myself so much drawn to a man as you. I feel so bad about. Please write me a long letter and tell me more. Remember if you do not I will punish you. So now you know what I will do to you, you naughty boy, if you do not wrote. Oh how I long to meet you. Henry dear, do not deny my request before my patience are exhausted. Then I will tell you all. Goodbye now, naughty darling, I have such a bad headache. Today. And right by return to your longing Martha P.S. Do tell me what kind of perfume does your wife use? I want to know. He tore the flower gravely from its pinholed smelt its almost no smell and placed it in his heart pocket. Language of flowers. They like it because no one can hear. Or a poison bouquet to strike him down. Then walking slowly forward he read the letter again, murmuring here and there a word. Angry tulips with you darling man flower punish your catness if you don't please pull forget me not how I long violets to dear roses when we soon anemone meet all naughty not stock wife Martha's perfume. Having read it all he took it from the newspaper and put it back in his side pocket. 
week, Joyo opened his lips. Changed since the first letter. Wondered that she wrote it herself. Doing the indignant, a girl of good family like me, respectable character. Could meet one Sunday after the rosary. Thank you, not having any. Usual love scrimmage. Been running round corners. Bad as a row with Molly. Cigar has a cooling effect. Narcotic. Go further next time. Naughty boy. Punish. Afraid of words, of course. Brutal. Why not? Tried anyhow. A bit at a time. Finger ink still the letter in his pocket. He drew the pen out of it. Comet pen, eh? He threw it on the road. Out of her clothes somewhere, pinned together. Queer the number of pens they always have. No roses without thorns. Flat Dublin voices ball in his head. Those two sluts that night in the coom, linked together in the rain. Oh, Mary lost the pen of her drawers. She didn't know what to do to keep it up to keep it up. It. Then. Such a bad headache. Has her roses probably. Or sitting all day typing. I focus bad for stomach nerves. What perfume does your wife use? Now could you make out a thing like that? To keep it up. Martha, Mary. I saw that picture somewhere I forget now old master I faked for money. He is sitting in their house, talking. Mysterious. Also the two sluts in the coon would listen. To keep it up. Nice kind of evening feeling. No more wandering about. Just low there, quiet dusk, let everything rip. Forget. Tell about places you have been, strange customs. The other one, jar on her head, was getting the supper, fruit, olives, lovely cool water out of a well, stone and cold like the hole in the wall at Ashdown. Must carry a paper goblet next time I go to the trotting matches. She listens with big dark soft eyes. Tell her, more and more, all. Then a sigh, silence. Long, long, long rest. Going under the railway arch he took out the envelope, tore it swiftly in shreds and scattered them towards the road. The shreds fluttered away, sank in the dank air, a white flutter, then all sank. Henry Flower. You could tear up a check for a hundred pounds in the same way. Simple bit of paper. Lord Ivy once cashed a seven-figure check for a million in the Bank of Ireland. Shows you the money to be made out of Porter. Still the other brother Lord Ardelon has to change his shirt four times a day, they say. Skin breeds lice or vermin. A million pounds, wait a moment. Tuppence a pint, furpence a quart, eight pence a gallon of porter, no, one and furpence a gallon of porter. One and four into twenty, fifteen about. Yes, exactly. Fifteen millions of barrels of porter. What am I saying barrels? Gallons. About a million barrels all the same. An incoming train clanked heavily above his head. Coach after coach. Barrels bumped in his head, dull porter slipped and churned inside. The bungles sprang open and a huge dull flood leaked out, flowing together, winding through mud flats all over the level land, a lazy pooling swirl of liquor bearing along wittily the flowers of its froth. He had reached the open back door of All Hallows. Stepping into the porch, he doffed his hat took the card from his pocket and tucked it again behind the leather headband. Damn it. I might have tried to work and co for a pass a Mullinger. Same notice on the door. Sermon by the very Reverend John Kami S.J. on St. Peter Claver S.J. in the African Mission. 
prayers for the conversion of Gladstone they had to when he was almost unconscious. The Protestants are the same. Convert Dr. William J. Walsh deity to the true religion. Save China's millions. Wonder how they explain it to the heathen Chinese. Prefer an ounce of opium. Celestials. Rank hair siphonum. Buddha their god lying on his side in the museum. Taking it easy with hand under his cheek. Just sticks burning. Not like Ekihomo. Crown of thorns and cross. Clever idea of Saint Patrick the Shamrock. Chopsticks. Can me, Martin Cunningham knows him, distinguished looking. Sorry I didn't work him about getting Molly into the choir instead of that Father Farley who looked a fool but wasn't. They're taught that. He's not going out in bluey specks with the sweat rolling off him to bought these blacks, is he? The glasses would take the fancy, flashing. Like to see them sitting around in a ring with blood lips, entranced, listening. Still life. Lap it up like milk, I suppose. The cold smell of sacred stone called him. He trod the worn steps, pushed the swing door and entered softly by the rear. Something going on, some sodality. Pity so empty. Nice discreet place to be next some girl. Who was my neighbor? Jammed by the hour to slow music. That woman at midnight mass. Seventh heaven. Women knelt on the benches with crimson halters round their necks, heads bowed. A batch knelt at the altar rails. The priest went along by them, murmuring, holding the thing in his hands. He stopped at each, took out a communion, shook a drop or two of in water. Often put it neatly into her mouth. Her hat and head sank. Then the next one. Her hat sank at once. Then the next one, a small one. The priest bent down to put it into her mouth, murmuring all the time. Latin. The next one. Shut your eyes and open your mouth. What? Corpus. Body. Corpse. Good idea, Latin. Stupefies them first. Hospice for the dying. They don't seem to chew it, only swallow it down. Rum idea, eating bits of the corpse. Why the cannibals cotton to it? He stood aside watching their blind masks pass down the aisle, one by one, and seek their places. He approached a bench and seated himself in its corner, nursing his hat and newspaper. These pots we have to wear. We ought to have hats modeled on our heads. They were about him here and there, with heads still bowed in their crimson halters, waiting for it to melt in their stomachs. Something like those mozoth, it's the sort of bread, unleavened shoe bread. Look at them. Now I bet it makes them feel happy. Lollipop. It does. Yes. Bread of angels it's called. There's a big idea behind it, kind of kingdom of God is within you feel. First communicants. Hokey pokey penny of love. And feel all like one family party, same in the theater, all in the same swim. They do. I'm sure of that. Not so lonely. In our confraternity. Then come out a bit spriash, let off steam. Thing is if you really believe in it. Lord's cure, waters of oblivion, and the knock apparition, statues bleeding. Old fellow sleep near that confession box. Hence those snowers. Blind faith. Safe when the arms of kingdom come. Lulls all pain. Wake this time next year.